How much would a pinch of sand be worth to you? How about without the elements of gold or platinum mixed into it, just moon dust? A recent auction sold it for half a million dollars, for literally just a pinch of what's on the moon. But this apparently valuable minuscule amount of dirt was valued purely on its historical relevance. That pinch of sticky moon sand was from a small pouch that was collected by Neil Armstrong on the Apollo 11 mission in 1969. It was a huge piece of human history and a physical reminder of when man first landed on the moon, something taken from a place that no one else has ever been able to. Selling something from the moon opens a whole new debate around the legality of owning, using, and selling space resources from unclaimed parts of the solar system. Currently, the world abides by the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which depicts the foundations of modern space law. This treaty, established so long ago, didn't predict the lucrative use of outer worlds for resource utilization. Although this treaty prevents anyone from claiming ownership of any new worlds, the potential value of these unclaimed territories is priceless. The moon is not only a stepping stone for future exploration into outer space, from which moon bases and possibly moon cities will one day thrive. For this purpose, humans will need to develop shipping bays and factories to support carriers to cross into new worlds. This project will need some good investments. Mining stations will provide the economy of the hypothetical moon city. There will be infrastructure and transportation to the moon and back again. All of this will cost a lot, way more than a reminder of when man first walked on the moon. So apart from moon dust, what else could be valuable on the moon? There is value in the resources on the moon. We don't know the exact numbers, but it's estimated that there is more than was thought in the past. The Earth's natural satellite is believed to be abundant with iron, nickel, and cobalt, amongst many more. These minerals provide the potential for building Moon City itself. Just as in human history, cities around the world are a reflection of what resources are in abundance in their surroundings, and Moon City will be the same in that way. A gray city, walls made with metal, iron dust, and a lunar sand concrete with great windows made from the unlimited sand available. The moon is also rich in silicon, an important ingredient in producing solar panel arrays. There's calcium to be used to fabricate the silicon-based solar cells, along with other ingredients found there, like titanium oxide, iron, and aluminum. The long dormant lunar magma ocean residing under its surface holds magnesium. It's especially prominent within the lower crust and is useful for many purposes, most importantly for alloys with expected space travel. The production of steel requires many sources of carbon, crucially important for supporting the mega factories and for the many thousands of ships that will be built. Numerous rare earth materials are used in everything electrical. They continue to be more valuable, and their production is more prominent as technology progresses, especially in electric vehicles and wind turbines. Although rare earth materials are abundant on our planet, you won't find them in many concentrated areas. They are spread thin throughout the earth, so locating and mining them is pretty costly, though they're more required with every year. The process of finding and mining on the moon is far easier and will be an important alternate source. Nitrogen, along with carbon, are important elements to support human colonization and farming and ensure that the moon is not only habitable, but has a constant supply of food. We can obtain them within the moon's outer crust, so farming is possible there within sealed biospheres. Mining metals is a difficult process, but the result is worth it, not only for their value, but also because of the valuable byproducts that you can get in the process of extraction. It can be oxygen, available for breathable air within the city, and hydrogen to ensure water for the plants and for drinking. Valuable resources will not only come from within the surface of the moon, its potential for solar power is so huge, it will ensure harvesting the solar waves to power Moon City. The fact that it lacks a thick atmosphere and that there's no interruption of weather patterns removes some major obstacles that are present on Earth. The energy created could be sufficient for all requirements on the moon, 
and, in the short term, may also help solve many of Earth's power concerns. Extracting resources and manufacturing requirements will be significant as time carries forward. As Moon City is going to grow, and humans will reach further into outer space, it will require more and more energy. The output to factories and production on the Moon will become so elaborate that they will need alternate sources in reserve. Atom-powered fusion will be an important source of energy with no dangerous byproduct. It will be safer than the technologies of today that use uranium. Feeding this kind of fusion will require the most valuable of all resources found on the Moon, helium-3. It's not only present on the Moon, but can also be found on Earth. But the amount is super limited here due to our planet's strong magnetic field. It ensures life can thrive on Earth, but at the same time, deflects the solar winds from the Sun, making it difficult for helium-3 to be produced. The Moon has no magnetic field and has been absorbing the solar wind for billions of years, constantly building up an endless supply of helium-3 in the process. It absorbs the winds into the top layer of solid material on the Moon, also known as the regolith. The regolith is spread all over the Moon, and it makes the extraction of the helium-3 an even more valuable action. Mining it would also include mining all the other valuable minerals in the process. The value of helium-3 is so substantial that many countries and companies are determined to gain a foothold on the Moon. The value of this alone is within trillions of dollars. Some people believe the opportunities that helium-3 will give humanity are immeasurable. There will be unlimited energy providing millions of jobs in Moon City. That energy will also support the Earth's needs. Only 25 tons of helium-3 could power the United States for an entire year. This resource will provide the potential to power all of Earth for thousands of years and have enough energy required to help guide humans further into space. It will enable the construction of spaceports around Earth and allow for a more efficient journey from Earth to orbit. From there, people will be transferred to shuttles destined for other locations throughout the solar system. The lengths of spaceflight will be reduced significantly, creating more frequent flights toward Mars. Further ports will be erected around its orbit, supporting new colonies to reside on its surface. Mining colonies with the support of endless energy will spread throughout the red planet, with more valuable resources residing within its red soil. This new age of colonization in the solar system will cause a domino effect as it continues to push further, advancing with every generation of vessels developed. Travel will get more and more efficient as the Helium-3 will continue to assist in advancing the technology of spacefaring ships. Outposts of all purposes will develop on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. From researching for potential habitability for life on Europa or Enceladus, to continuing the tradition of extracting valuable resources in every location. The Moon will continue to find ways to provide the energy that's needed for terraforming new worlds. It will assist in warming Mars and powering an artificial magnetic field. It will also help with constructing a large reflector that will be able to cool down Venus. All of these will be the foundations for creating further livable locations for future generations of humans all thanks to that initial source of energy from the Moon. It's difficult to put an overall price tag on the Moon, even when you know that there is value in harvesting its resources. The value of what the Moon dust really amounts to can't be determined by a monetary figure, but by its potential to influence what humans can create as we continue to progress as a species.